If you talk to any of my family, friends, or God forbid, my wife, you might get the impression that along with everything else I carry on a daily basis, that I never seem to leave home without my soapbox. Maybe I'm a glutton for punishment. Maybe I just like a good debate. Or maybe I like being right. I don't know. Either way, this is going to be a Steel Knight Soapbox video. First, for the uninitiated, let's talk terms. A slide stop is a nifty little part of a handgun that the magazine will employ after the last round is spent. This operation comes from the last round hold open device, which is part of the follower. It pushes the lever up and catches the slide, which does two things. Let's you know that you are out of bullets and allows you to insert a fresh mag with the slide release already ready to come forward. You can operate this lever manually to lock the slide to the rear. A slide release is the same part on a handgun. However, it refers to the function of depressing it to release the slide, thereby returning the slide to battery and chambering around if there is one in the mag. So we have one part that has two names and can or does serve both functions. So what's the problem? The problem has come from a debate that has lasted for the better part of a decade and a half of whether or not you should employ this device as a slide release or should you return the slide to battery by means of pulling back on the slide, also known as the slingshot method. There are two schools of thought on this, and it gets kind of complicated. So if you need to, you can rewind this video and listen again once or twice and you will get it. The first school of thought is that it is not a good methodology to employ the use of a slide release. The second school of thought is that it is perfectly acceptable to employ the use of a slide release. While no one in the world argues that it's not a slide stop, it all comes down to should you use it as a slide release. Okay, I lied. It's not that complicated. But even so, the debate rages on. However, do not fear, for I am here to soapbox the hell out of this. But instead of doing something rather boring, I'm just going to go for the jugular of this supposed controversy and deconstruct the hell out of the arguments for slide stop only methodology. France. Number one. I'm going to start with the dumbest of all arguments for slide stop only. Using the slide stop as a release damages the gun. Congratulations! You have a range toy! I don't care if it's a $3,000 gun. The slide metal is so soft that another part of the gun basically will damage it. Now granted, this is a somewhat valid thing. There are some guns that have suffered this issue, mostly 1911s using a soft stainless steel. If that is the case, fine. But the majority of quality handguns that are out there do not suffer from this issue. My qualm with this argument isn't that it's baseless, it's more that if you have a gun that will basically chew itself up if you use the slide release, it's not a combat ready gun, it's a range toy. And as we all know, range toys get special treatment. To me this goes hand in hand with don't dry fire a particular firearm. I can dry fire any of my EDC guns all day for years without a problem. Some guns however, it does put stress and can cause damage. But once again, if you can't dry fire practice without snap caps, chances are that's not a very reliable combat weapon. Number two. The less ridiculous argument of it can damage the slide stop causing it to break. Finally, yes, an argument with some teeth. Guns are made of metal and plastic. And as we all know, if you can touch it, you can most likely break it. Slide stops can and do break. While it is rare that a slide stop breaks, obviously using something more will cause stress and wear and eventually may be the reason it does break. However, out of all the operations of a handgun, two things. One, there are a hell of a lot of stresses in other parts of the gun that can cause the gun to fail or suffer a parts breakage. I don't see us not shooting a gun for that reason. And number two, if your slide stop breaks, so what? While it may impact your performance with the gun, a slide stop breaking usually won't stop the gun from working. There are some guns that do not lock the slide or bolt back after the last round, and those guns seem to get along just fine. Like any other malfunction, learn how to cope with the firearm should this happen. Number three. My manual calls it a slide stop, not a slide release. Yay, congrats, you own a Glock. And are part of the reason this stupid debate rages on, well, I have a lot of manuals that call it a slide release. Glock is the leading manufacturer that does not want you to employ a slide stop as a release. Hence why it resembles something akin to a metal hangnail rather than a functional piece of a gun. 
Never mind that they sell an extended slide stop to help you better use it as a slide release. And never mind that almost anyone who has owned a Glock for longer than five minutes feels it's the first or second thing that has to be changed out. I have literally met firearms instructors who have told people to not use the slide release lever method while using a Glock with an extended slide stop lever. I mean, if it's a method you say you should never use, then why do you need an extended lever? Number four. In a combat situation, using the slide stop requires fine motor skills, while using the slide pull method requires gross motor skills. Therefore, better to use. It would appear to me that the small button on the side of a grip requires a fine motor skill to actuate. So show me the gross motor skill you use to eject the mag. No, no. I'll wait. Yeah. Thought so. Look, I'm not saying there aren't times when it's better to do what will work best with gross motor skills over fine in a life or death situation. But it would appear that you can't escape at least one or two fine motor skills to work really well with a handgun, especially at a range beyond seven yards. Number five. It's better to use the slide-pull method because it mirrors malfunction drill procedures. See, this is a valid argument, but it isn't an argument against using a slide release. Not only that, but in a few cases, tap-rack-bang will make the malfunction worse. In a few of my malfunction drills, it's eject, rack, rack, rack to start out. God help you if you get it confused and you spit out two usable rounds because of trained muscle memory. However, a malfunction drill has one purpose, to get your gun back into the fight as quickly as possible. Well, the same logic should be true for a reload. What is faster? Using the slide releases, of course. So why is it in all of the gun wisdom world do fractions of a second mean the difference between life or death, but on a reload, let's take the scenic route. Number six, because the location of the slide release can differ on pistols, you can use the slide pull method on any gun and it works. It's universal. Once again, I feel the need to elaborate on something. I've noticed a few pervasive attitudes or opinions in the gun world, and in my opinion, it stems from there being a lot of people and professionals who happen to use Glocks. So their training would center around the pistol they use. Makes sense. But see, that goes out from there too. Well, the professionals do it this way so it's superior. No, the professionals use methods to achieve what they feel is the best with the equipment they use. You put a Beretta M9 that our military uses in the hands of a police officer who uses a Glock, and chances are he's going to figure out real quick that not everything you do on a Glock works for every gun. The slide pull method would at some point actuate the safety on the slide and cause the firearm to decock. So much for being universal. Now granted, I'm pretty sure slide safeties are on the way out in the firearm world, but they do still exist in a few pistols. But it's a dangerous mentality to assume that just because you own a pistol that constitutes a majority of firearms used, that the methods to use it work best in most situations and with other guns. Number seven, it makes for a more reliable reload. Honestly, this one should tie for first place stupid. Apparently in the gun world, the millimeter's difference between a 9mm round and a 45 is negligible. However, the millimeters from the slide being locked back versus how far it goes when pulled for reloads makes a massive tactical difference. I rarely hear this argument, but when I do, my eyes roll so far back into my head, you would think I was an extra on the Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark movie. So in no way am I advocating that one method is better than the other. Once again, it can boil down to what is best for you or your gun. The slide release is faster, but what if your stubby thumb can't reach it very well? In that case, it would be slower and better to do the pull method. I myself am an advocate of not only slide release use, but also having an ambi slide release if possible. Now you might ask, well, is there any argument for slide release that is more effective over the pull method? Well, yeah, there are several. If you're holding a flashlight, or if you're injured, or if the other guy is reloading too. Honestly, it comes down to your knowledge of your weapons, what works for you, and what works in certain situations. We can't overlook the fact that some guns give you a natural advantage of this. Look at the differences between a stock Glock and a stock P30L.
If you think you will need to employ a tactic, perhaps you need a change of gear or tool. Just a thought. In conclusion, practice what you will have to use. Try out the different methods and find out what you like, and take an honest look at what might work well most of the time, or just part of the time. And do what you think will give you the best measure for success. Like everything in the gun world, you take from one place, you gotta give in another. It's a matter of balance between form and function. Bottom line, both methods will work, and both methods have different potentials for failure. This is the Steel Knight, signing off.